So today we're going to be taking a look at the best graphic settings for Call of Duty, Modern Warfare 2 and Warzone. And this is going to be geared at the console players, particularly on the next gen consoles. So we're talking about the PS5 and the Series X and just making sure that we're getting the most out of these consoles which are super powerful and can make the game look amazing. We'll also be showing you how you can change your user interface to get the colours to look like this game, so it's super vibrant. We're also changing your hit indicator markers and things to something that is a bit more visible and kind of to your preference. So let's jump into it. So first off, you're going to want to have the on-demand texture streaming to on, particularly if you've got a good internet connection and ideally if you're connected up through an ethernet cable, this won't be a problem at all. So you'll, this will essentially make all of the textures look super detailed and look really nice without affecting the performance of the machine too much. But to kind of counteract that, you want to turn off motion blur, off weapon motion blur, film grain and depth of field. Although these make the game feel slightly cinematic, they'll make it harder to see and track your opponents, so you want to turn these off. However, you want to have the Fidelity FX CAS on. So I'll show you the difference off and on, so you can see how that looks. It essentially makes things a little bit sharper and slightly more crispy around the edge, so there's a bit more definition on the screen. You can also play around with the sensitivity or the strength of this and I found that 50% works best on this. You'll then want to have your field of view pushed well as high as you'd like to go. I generally have mine at 120. The downside to this is it does make the player character models smaller on your screen but you get so much more vision and you can see more of the map that I think the toss up between that is worthwhile. Some people do say as well that it reduces your aim assist at distance, but that's not actually true. It's just, it feels like it does because the character model is smaller. I wouldn't go below 110 really, but see where your sweet spot is. If you can, max it out. So then down onto third person field of view, you can afford to be slightly lower on this because you're already pulled back from the body. So I've left this at 80. Then on first person camera movement, I've got this set to least, so this lowers the kind of shake of the camera. Some people say that they get motion sickness from being maybe too close to the monitor. To help with this, you want to get this to least at 50%, and same for the third person. For the brightness, you want to make sure that the left-hand side isn't visible, obviously barely visible in the middle and then easily visible on the right. I found that on my monitor, something like 60% feels about right. You don't want it to be too bright, but also you don't want it to be too dark, otherwise you won't get any contrast. Next up is safe area. So you've got the options of toggling this outer or in. You want to pull this in as far as it will go, top and bottom and left and right. And what this will do will shrink in your HUD so your mini map is slightly further in, so your eye doesn't have to travel so far in the middle of gunfights up to your mini map, just saving you those split seconds which can help you in gunfights. So yeah, the closer in the better on this one. And now we jump down from graphics to interface and we want to jump into the color customization settings and this is where we'll start to be able to define how the hit markers and things like that look but you want to have your color filter to two and the target as world if you have it set to interface then it will start to change things on your hud and things like that whereas world will just be in game view you want the color intensity set to 100 and the interface and set intensity set to 100 as well. And then if you come down to HUD color palette, you can set it to color blindness settings if you have color blindness, or you can set it to a custom one so that you can set it to how you like it essentially. So I've got anything to do with me or my team set as blues and they're quite bright and poppy. Whereas the party is green and anything enemy is pink. I just found that the pink really popped a little more than the classic red they use as default. So this really popped out to me. And similarly, neutral is also blue and it's the same blue as me, just so I know it's kind of safe. And then contested is set to yellow. So that's kind of a halfway house between the two. And this is what I found works best for me. And this is what the settings were in the gameplay at the beginning of the video. Hopefully you found this video useful. If you did, then please consider giving it a like and subscribing to the channel, because I upload all things Warzone settings, tech reviews to help with gameplay, things like that. And if you want to check out my best controller settings, then check out the video here.